Hello and welcome. My name is Ajax Post and we're back here in Sim Airport, in our Sim Bristol Airport. And it's very early in the morning, it's about half past one, and people are already turning up, as is their want, two hours or more before their plane actually arrives, let alone before they start boarding. Uh, and uh, I've obviously got no staff in attendance here, so they're going to have to find their own way around the vending machines and the automated ticket desks. But where are we? At the end of the last episode, you may recall, we started research on a workaround to the little issue we discovered with uh, our remote gates here. That if they have over one bus full of passengers, so if they have more than 150 passengers, there's a risk that the second bus, to take on the sort of extra passenger numbers back to the plane, doesn't actually leave the remote uh, bus stop here. So the plane doesn't get its full complement of passengers and leaves early or late, as was the case in the one we tried. Uh, and uh, basically I lose money because I, I failed to get the perfect ops bonus. And the workaround until they actually put the fix into the public default branch of the game, it is already there in the edge. So if you're playing Sim Airport and you're playing with remote air, air, air and, and if you're playing with remote gates, then you may want, particularly the larger ones, then you may want to move to the edge branch um, just to see that fix in operation. As well as car parks, which is something else they added. So that should be coming up in, oh, it should be a few weeks now. It shouldn't be too long. Uh, might be towards the end of June, but I think we're looking certainly within the next month for the next update to the main default branch of the game. Anyway, uh, stop waffling. What I, the workaround was to research for the gates Mate, where where the heck? I keep losing stuff in here. Where was it? Uh, I've researched it, so it should tell me. Uh, gate control. That's it. Allows you to configure gate-related operations. Basically, I now have access to this option here: gate control, which means that the gate will close, and all passengers must be there, ready for the plane to take off. And this has a particular effect on remote gates in that it ensures that the last bus leaves the gate in time for the aircraft to take off. Now, I have actually played with this a little bit, and I discovered that 15 minutes wasn't quite long enough. I think it was today. We actually got a large flight scheduled for today. Um, 179, yeah, we've got that one there. I think when I tried it, that flight didn't quite get away in time. It did leave. Uh, it did get its, all its passengers, but they weren't there in time for the plane to depart on schedule. So what we're going to do is we're going to change gate control to uh, 20 minutes, which appears to work very well. So we're going to do that. That's 20 minutes. Uh, our transport capacity, the number of buses we've got coming into the airport. Um, the, the white line here, I think, is a little bit deceptive because buses come to deliver passengers and to take passengers away. And both those graphs, those lines, the yellow and the red, are below, or in this case, slightly above the green line, which is the average. Uh, so I think we're okay for buses at the moment. Well, they are coming in, actually, every 20 minutes, which is quite a lot. Uh, but if we need to increase that, we will, of course. But uh, other than that, we're fine. Right, now, the plan for today is we've put the gate control in. Um, I do plan to start work on the first floor of the airport, and I'll discuss that in more detail in a moment, but that's going to take a lot of building time. And I noticed when I was starting this episode that our runway here is in poor condition. It's 80% uh, condition, which means that come midnight tonight, my builders here, will my workmen, they're not just builders, they're, they're the multi-talented personnel will come out here and maintain and fix the runway. So I don't want to get in the way of them doing that. So we're going to have a, a couple of sprints through fast-forwarding the game in this episode. One of which will happen in a moment. Uh, but the other thing I want to do is because I'm reasonably happy that we are getting perfect ops again now, I think I understand and I've got this the setup correct to get people to their planes in good time, is adding another flight into the schedule. Uh, you may recall, I think it was in the last episode, I actually added Lufthansa 
to our roster of airlines. Is it here? Where is it? Where? Where? I, ah, Lufthansa. There it is. Yeah, they don't actually at this point in time operate flights through Bristol Airport in reality, but they were scheduled to start flights this year, 2020. Uh, so I'm I'm kind of going to sort of encourage them, show them how possible it is, how good a job Bristol can do servicing their flights by putting them into my game. Uh, now, what flights do they have available to me? Uh, extra larges. I don't have an extra large gate, so we're going to have to look at their small flights. Uh, so that's only a few. Uh, we've got mornings. I don't really want any more in the morning. Because morning is kind of a difficult time for us. Uh, A.N. That's the afternoon. We could put them in afternoon. They would go on gate uh, A3, I think. Oh, actually, no. We've got three, 320, which carries 150 passengers, possibly. Or the 195, which is a 90. I, I think... Just to be certain I don't screw up my perfect reputation, we'll take the smaller flight for now. Uh, oh, the CRJ 900. 75. Ah, uh, we, we can do better than that. One to seven three. They've got quite an extensive fleet here. And a 737. Uh, where's that? What's the 737 do? 140. No, I think we'll go with the, with the smaller plane. Which is the one and the one nine? Um, I don't want to put it in the morning, so we're gonna have to go for the. Yeah, I think that's the one we'll do. We'll do the evening flight with the seventy-five maximum capacity. That should be fine. We should be able to handle that, no trouble at all. So we'll accept you. There you go, and we'll move you into our schedule here. Gate A three, which is our small aircraft gate, our small capacity gate. And two hours, you don't need two hours. Uh, I want to squeeze you down to an hour and a half. Hour 40, okay, we'll do that. We'll leave you, actually, if I put you in there. No, let's, let's move you out here, I think. So you don't conflict with too many other flights coming in or going out. Okay, so they will turn up tomorrow, that is Fine. Uh, what else have we done? Oh, yes. One thing I, I mentioned in the last episode was when I put this new remote uh, gate in here is, oh, we'll have to put the fuel ports in. We'll have to upgrade it. What I hadn't noticed was I don't actually have any fuel ports on any of these gates. Uh, so, no, none of them. I thought I had done it, but I was obviously thinking of something else. I have really no, no idea what. So we'll spend money on that, I think, uh, during today, while our workers aren't doing too much. So we need to, ah, so I need to upgrade the ports first, uh, the, uh, the stands first. Stick these on there. You need to place them yourself. I, I always put them here. I don't know if that's the right position. If you're in any way more familiar with aircraft stands than I am, uh, and can tell me where they should be placed, then please do. Please do let me know. Uh, I don't want the plane, I want the uh, the gate. That's it. I'll stick you in there as well. Uh, even on this little one? Even on this little one, yes. You don't get served by the baggage cars, you get your baggage delivered directly by our workmen. Uh, but we will give you a fuel port. I'm not quite sure what difference it makes because the fuel tanker does still show up, but I believe they are faster or more efficient. Uh, uh, hang on, what's going on here? Let's close that. Let's go here. Don't assign, upgrade it. That's it. Uh, but I believe they are more efficient, faster or something, perhaps. So I'll stick you there and likewise here. These are costing me five grand a piece, but I'm doing okay. I seem to be making a fair amount of money. Over, back over a million. Oh, I'm on final upgrade here to our standby gate. We'll slip you in there. Right, so what we need to do, go underground. Uh, not to the queues, to the utilities, and put in some fuel pipes. 
There you are. You see, you're all down here. See, there's, there's nothing. <laughs> I really don't know what I was thinking of when I said, oh, oh I, I have to put the pipes in to connect here to these fuel ports. Uh, and down there. And to this one. Across there. And to you. And finally, to you. Excellent. Right, uh, there's one other little thing I'd spotted as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, the buses and the baggage cars seem to be carrying across the tarmac on the taxiway here, going to this remote gate. Uh, so can I afford to spend some money on some road to stop them doing that? Uh, I think I can. So I think if we take them across here, which direction is that road going in? There you go. Across there should do. I'm always astonished by how expensive road is here. <laughs> and perhaps also coming in here from the bottom. Yeah, they do seem to come in on this bit of road at the top. Oh, oh hang on, hang on. Who's the, what's going on here? That's a standby gate. You shouldn't be in use. What's happened there? What's happened there? Um, okay, which fly to you on B3? The Aer Lingus flight. Presumably you would have gone to uh, one of these two. <laughs> uh, so you came in at uh, 217. Uh, yeah, is that Tui? Must have left a little bit late. Yeah, left at 216. So it could have just been that as the Aer Lingus flight was coming in, the Tui had the runway. But that's what's supposed to happen. That's the runway. That's the standby gate working perfectly well. It's just the fact that flights arrive and depart sometimes sooner than they are, sh or at slightly different times to what they're scheduled. And that's fine. Anyway, otherwise, looking at this. Yeah, our bus, I, I, we missed it because I was messing around with the fuel ports. Our big plane did depart in time. Just about, actually, <laughs> four minutes early, but a full complement of passengers, which is the key. And everything else is looking fine, so we should get another perfect operations bonus today. And that will rank up from yesterday's 5,800. Yeah, it should be over eight grand. That's nice. And what that will do, hopefully, is because we are going to need to take out a loan to complete the expansion of our airport. So actually, let's look at that expansion right now. Um, I'll put up a little graphic of what I'm planning to do. Uh, in the meantime, let's take the, the UI away for a moment. So you can see the, the full airport terminal building and, and the photograph image of what we're doing. Uh, the, the image you're seeing is 90 degrees, so the left hand side is the bottom end of my terminal building where the baggage collection area is at the moment. Uh, so the right hand side of that image is the top here where I've got the little coffee shop and the ticket desks. Okay, so what's going to happen is on the first floor, all security is actually happening at the back area here at the very bottom of the terminal building. So they'll actually come upstairs up here somewhere into security. Uh, there's obviously a, presumably a side channel there which they go to. Uh, there's a security area around here. Then all the rest of this on the first floor, all this uh, top end of the building here, will be departure lounge. And this is where this turns Bristol Airport from simply a place where people can get on and get off an aeroplane into a proper retail money-making e enterprise. So we will then start filling up this uh, the departure lounge with the shops, uh, the retail outlets, the cafes, uh, lots more toilets. They don't appear to actually on the real map that have that many toilets, but I think the game actually makes them a little bit bigger than they need to be, than they are representative of the real thing. So that's what we're planning to do. So what we'll do, I'm going to fast forward through the rest of the day 
so that uh, my men can complete the maintenance on the runway here, 77%. Yeah, they start maintaining at midnight when it gets below 80%. Um, and then we'll take out the loan and specify how much of the first floor we want to build. We won't be able to do it all in one go. You know that much already. So I will see you on the other side of this sexy video effect and we'll crack on with, uh, with the building of the first floor of Bristol Airport. Okay, so here we are. We've just gone midnight of uh, into the next day and our runway is currently closed for maintenance. Um, right, let's we speed the game up a little bit more. We should actually looking at this area. The workmen have picked up their supplies. They're heading off there now. Um, I don't think I did this in the last episode. I think I did it slightly afterwards, uh, off camera. Is I noticed that in the early morning here there are some passengers as we've seen arrive like there they are now arriving for their early morning flights and the garbage area here can get quite full and that bus would be held up behind this garbage van this rubbish this uh, this dustbin lorry as we call it in the UK we used to call do we still call it that I'm not entirely sure anyway so what I've done is I've just put in a little bit of road here move the garbage zone out to one side here actually what I'll do as well is because that was getting quite full is there is uh Oh, a dumpster. It's under ops. Okay, fair enough. We'll put this here, which I think gives me another 10, if we can check that. So garbage zone, one of 45. This takes up, I think, probably three squares or something. Two squares. We'll put you in... I uh, will put you at the back there. There you go. Um, yes, yeah, so that'll give me... That, that gives me 10 extra garbage spaces. Uh, so that will save that filling up and causing me problems. But this little road just means that the very early morning buses uh, don't get stuck behind the uh, the dustbin lorries anymore. Okay, um, I will actually start moving some of these other zones closer to the terminal as well and spending money on the roads. But as we know, roads are expensive. Anyway, where's the, where's the runway doing? It's still shut. Um, it should be open in time for the first flight to arrive. But let's, while we're doing that, let's have a look at our monies from yesterday. Day 25. We only actually made a profit at the end of the day of 26 and a half grand. Um, we were well over 200, I think, at one point until we had to pay at 11 o'clock for a, a new a consignment of fuel. We must have spent, we must have sold a lot. So 206 grand's worth of fuel and, of course, all the materials for those fuel pipes and stuff. That we put in actually what was day 24 like a loss day 23 we met that was a much better day 103 okay but anyway our perfect ops for yesterday yes we made it excellent so that's eight and a half grand more than that so what we should do today yeah the planes are landing the runway is yep yeah, nearly 100 percent full okay so what we're going to do today we're going to take a loan our credit report is good um, and actually before we do that, let's, let me just show you how much this is going to cost. If we take our foundation from here, this area we laid out last time represents the sort of secure from the security area downwards. So if we go from there all the way up there, that's one and a half million dollars. Yeah, and to do the whole building. Uh, come on, you're going to go up for me. Will cost me nearly three. Yeah, so that's why we're only going to do a bit of it to start with. So we're going to need a loan for, uh, I think to be on the safe side, a million. Bank loans. Uh, so how much would a million cost me? One to three percent. We don't know quite how much yet. <laughs> so probably around two percent, uh, which would be. Well, I can never remember how they. I can never remember how they calculate this, so I'm not even going to bother trying. We could go up to one and a half million, but I don't want the interest payments to be too onerous. So I think if we just go for a straight million. It's a nice round number. Accountants like round numbers, don't they? So we go for that. Apply for the loan. 1.83%. Uh, if I decline this, I think I mentioned this in the previous episode, um, 
I will be able to get another loan, but it will cost more in interest rate. The interest rate will go up because I keep requesting money. So I accept this or wait for a few more days or weeks before applying again or whatever 1.83 is, we need it. So 18 grand a day. We should be OK with that. OK, so where are we going to start building from? OK, so security is going to be down here. We'll probably run it. Yeah, we'll run it sort of uh, as it were across the, the terminal. Uh, in the different the or other orientation to the way it's running at the moment and so they'll come in down up here across and then go into departure lounge there i think if we start yeah somewhere around there we'll be fine uh, foundation so somewhere around there page up okay we're a bit short of where i said but let's try that Okay, one and a half million, done. Okay, so we'll get the guys working on that. Now, everything else should work fine today. Uh, if we check our flight schedule, yeah, we've got a couple of reasonably big flights coming in. More, ah, uh, that's that's later in the morning. Oh, we've already dealt with. Yeah, we've got no very big flights. We've got nothing here over 150. I think we should be fine. We should be able to handle those extra pass those those planes without any problem. Um, the Lufthansa flight that is scheduled for later in the day on gate A3. Uh, another thing I did as well just to even things out a little bit um, is there was a this Wizz Air flight 1901. It was originally coming in on gate B1 kind of close behind the TUI 9901 uh, and I thought that is a bit close there's there's normally no problem at all at that time of night but what I'll do is I'll move it to the other gate just in case because the Lauder Air or Louder however it's pronounced I do apologize um, is a slightly smaller flight and leaves earlier so we should be safer doing it that way around okay so once again what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward this um, until all my men have finished building this extra foundation up on the first floor. Uh, so yeah, that will take at least today and probably tomorrow. So uh, we'll have, you, you will miss, I'm afraid, quite a lot of flights, but none of the really exciting action of me building things. So I'll see you again very shortly on the other side of this other sexy video effect. And look, here we are, a completed first section half of the first floor that we're going to end up being a, a complete absolutely delightful departure area which passengers will enjoy coming into spending time and money while they await their flights off to their luxurious and lovely and exciting destinations anyway um so that's taken about a day and a half or so to complete um we've managed so far to make today Near over 200 grand. I dare say a lot of that will disappear once we start spending more money, which I'm, I'm about to do, um, and also when we replenish our fuel supply. Uh, we did get our perfect operations bonus yesterday of 12 grand. Uh, I think we're in line for get what, to get one today. Though, yeah, notice here I did complain about this at length in a previous episode. Some flights, particularly Wizz Air, it appears to be come through with zero passengers for departure now one of those did actually arrive the other day off camera and I still got my um, perfect operations bonus because obviously I am perfectly delivering zero of zero passengers I haven't gone wrong on that so that's fine and they did take off in good time um, so on that episode where I was really upset and frustrated about it there must have been something else going on as well but I still think there is an issue when it comes to looking at this departure information and the perfect ops analysis that we see in here. So when I go down to this, yeah, I think this ga can go wrong. Uh, so I still think there's an issue with that. However, we're making good money. We've got our first floor uh, set up, so we need to start planning out what it's going to look like. As we said, our security area is going to be around here, so there's going to be some steps up here on the left-hand side. 
um, and there'll be some steps down into the departure corridor from the departure lounge area as we saw on the on the original diagram okay now let's check out how big we need to make that security area um, okay I will plan this out I'm going to plan it out as if I intend to do something sensible and do it properly but as, as everyone here knows that often doesn't work so uh, each of these is three uh, and whoops and seven down but we, we may need another one or two of these security checks depending if we get that much bigger flights uh, coming through which I hope we do um, but we could move in these remote control stations closer and we don't need quite such a gap between the ID check and the baggage scanner I think there will be some gap but not quite as much so I think if we get an area like that that should be okay I think so we're looking at uh, 25 uh, what is 3 what's 3 8 is 24 and 3 9 is 27 so could we go for an area of 27 by about 12 I don't want that there <laughs> I want it upstairs uh, that's downstairs go up so 27 by 12 so it should go from the wall here so if that's 12 actually if we make it about there so that's let's say 14 by 27 wasn't it what am I doing yes if that's our departure air, our security area that should work okay I think yeah yeah I think it will okay now we're going because I don't want to take any of our existing stations out of operation we'll have to buy some new ones we can sell those which are excess to requirements later on uh, so we're not losing money entirely by doing this so let's get some actually what I'll do just to make sure I get them in the right orientation because <laughs> I, 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 I always I got these route wrong the wrong way if you I got these round the wrong way if you remember correct if you remember from the earlier video so we actually want to go to the clone tool here so if I clone you like that move you upstairs come down here and then swing you around check the arrows that looks good uh, and the guys do stand uh, yeah between the, the metal detector and the bag scanner that's that's fine so if we have you around that way yep that should be good we should be able to have those right against the wall that's good so the ID desks will be along the left hand side, the scanners here. Actually, if we move these scanners back, because we may, we will want queues in there as well. I, I forgot the queues. Okay, so if we put you in there. And. Perhaps another couple for the moment. And uh, we want a remote control desk. Go in there. Okay, and we will place you. Yeah, we'll place you there. We will have one at the other end as well. I think the sort of the maximum efficient number of bag scanners to remote station is four, possibly five. But we shall see. Uh, what is what's what's going on there? Have they taken the there's, there's no car they've not brought the car they've not brought the carpet up as well have they? Well, they, they might well have done that. Oops. <laughs> I want to have a different colour carpet upstairs. Oh, that'll teach me for do, for doing it the lazy. Yes, they have. They brought the carpet up as well. Oh well. Okay. Well, we don't want anyone on the schedule on these just yet. So let's go to the scheduler. Uh, this is security staff. So we don't want. Where are we now? We're in daytime. That's daytime. So want nobody. 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 
Nobody. This is going to be one of the, one of the things I'm probably going to forget when we start bringing this first floor into operation. It's getting the right stuff on the right schedule in here. But, uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, so we want the ID checks as well. So your ops uh, ID check stand. And your that way around. Actually, we put you. Yeah. For him. There. Okay, and that should give us room for reasonable cues here, I think. Let's take you off. There you go. Splendid. What time is it? Oh, it's only six o'clock in the evening. Okay. And this will need. Well, actually, what we'll do, we'll mark this all air, this whole area as secure. So that sounds security. So if I mark you as security, okay. What we'll have? Uh, yeah, we're going we're to have to move things around here a bit, I think. If I put in a wall here, is that going to allow me to put some steps in? Well, let's, let's try it and see. Probably not, so we may have to move this bar for a while. Okay. What we should be able to do then is from the departure area here start putting in right, not sure where the stairs are. <laughs> there you are, stairways down. So we can put you where do you go? You go in there, for example. And there. Yeah, so we'll put the stairs in there to allow people to get down quickly. They may also, yeah, they'll also need to come up. So, in fact, if you remember, or I don't think I mentioned this when we, were, when we were looking at the actual plan of the real Bristol Airport. Um, I don't think there was, I don't, I don't think I mentioned there was any, no, there was no escalators uh, going up to the first floor, apart from those that came up from the ticket desk area. So there's one escalator coming up into security, but Going into the departure and arrival corridor, there were no escalators at all. There was a couple of lifts at either end, or elevators as for some reason they called them, um, and stairways, and that was it. Um, possibly, I don't know, are, are escalators more dangerous when you've got masses of people rushing to catch a flight? They probably, possibly are. What am I doing? I'm taking the zoning away. That's what I'm, no, I'm not taking the planning away. Uh, we don't need that because I've marked that now as security. Okay. And get the schedule going on here. Okay, so that's all done for the security area. And can we? What we'll do? Because the seating goes uh, mostly along here. Yeah, the trouble is, I'm not too sure how you get down to the gates from here. It's not clear on the plan, and like I say I haven't visited. I haven't visited Bristol for many years, so I'm not quite sure. Uh, so the, okay, the stairway should be here, which means we have room for seating here. There's no obvious seating. I think this is just walkway here, so the seating is all up here. So that's what we will do. Uh, and I'll put some put some seats in. I won't uh, worry about cloning them. Uh, what am I looking for? Objects, comfort, that's what we're looking for. Uh, how much are these? You're 500. You're 500. Those are modded ones are just outrageously expensive. <laughs> uh, these, these are nice. These, again, they're very, for some reason, 
most of the assets uh, on from the workshop are quite cheap or relatively cheap compared to the vanilla base game mods but the benches are exorbitant in price uh, I'm not quite sure what the logic is there to that but there you go okay so we will put uh, seating Now, uh, we'll put that in like that uh, around. Once they get built, I can then clone that, make my life a lot easier. Now, my concern is that if I get stairway up here, actually, can I do that now? Can I test that? Actually, if I delete that bit of wall, I might be able to test this. Uh, dismantle that area of wall there. In fact, let's let's take that whole wall out. We don't need it there anymore. Our departures are quite separate still from our arrivals. There's no security breach possible there. That's the one thing I'm worried about building while the airport is actually running um, is uh, potential security breaches. So stairs again go up or down from here we can put them in excellent uh, don't go up again go down down right, you can't go there uh, actually oh can you go which way around are you you want to be that way around Okay, you work from there. Uh, okay, let's put a stairway up there. Yeah, that works for me, I think. We'll move the bar and then put uh, another stairway as well. We'll, we'll need at least three, I think. Possibly more uh, to get the passengers through. As we know, certainly early morning, there's a lot of passengers that need to get through the airport. How are we doing on our schedule? Excellent. I think, assuming that zero passenger flight doesn't give me any problems, we should be off for a perfect ops again. And we've made so far today 165 I uh, will probably lose, probably lose money. Oops, I just missed it. Uh, we might, oh, we might actually make a small profit today. That's going to be impressive. Right, so we can, the trouble is in, in the game you can't move items around. <laughs> there are other games like Another Brick in the Mall where you can move assets and objects around. Um, but in Sim Airport you can't. You've actually got to dismantle them, put them into storage as it were, and then bring them back. Uh, so, actually, if we dismantle you, we could move you upstairs. Okay. Yeah, you're doing that. It's not accessible. Why is it not accessible? Ah, possibly, possibly because it's past the next security zone. Yeah, I think it needs to be accessible from a public area, is what that's referring to there. And the other problem, adjacent to at least one non-secure and non-staff. Yeah, I think that's the issue, yeah, because it's not connected to an unsecure or insecure zone. Okay, so how was profit yesterday? Oh, it's like, oh, we're paying taxes and that loan interest, of course. Darn. Perfect Ops. 18 grand. So, yeah, if we keep this up, if we keep Perfect Ops up, that will pay off our interest. So I'm feeling reasonably confident, despite the fact that our cash flow is kind of negative for the last couple of days. Uh, we should be able to recover that quite nicely. Okay, so you've gone. So we need uh, some more stairs. Uh, what I'll do is I'll clone you because I'm just feeling very, very lazy. Oh, can I not pick you up, is it? 
you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to get to grips with that clone tool. I was really good at it in the first series, but for some reason, either they've changed it or I've completely forgotten how the thing works. Uh, K, K, K was it? No. Q? No. Q? No. I'll, ah, never mind. Never mind. We will find the stairs again. Okay, and we want stairways down because we'll put these up here. And you're going to go. All right. We'll put three in. How much do they actually cost? Don't check that. Ooh, 27 and a half grand. Yeah, they're, they're kind of expensive. Right. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, clone this seating area. Put you like that. And like that. Give us something to start with. And then we'll start filling this out with shops and other other really good goodies. Can we move some of these upstairs? I'm not going to do that just yet. Now the problem is that some passengers are likely to wander upstairs from here. So what we'll do. OK, what I'll do actually is the episode is running to a reasonable length at the moment. So we will actually stop here. We've started work on our first floor and we will continue and make this floor operational in the next episode, which should be entertaining to say the least. And we'll start we should start filling this out with some shops and other retail outlets as well. But at the very minimum, it will be operational. So we will move things around. We'll get security moved upstairs. In fact, we might be able to do that quickly by taking out a slice of the secure zone here, for example. We shall see. Anyway, yes, that's it for now. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Sim Airport. If you have, it'd be great to hear from you. A little bit of a like would be lovely. Even better, though, if you've got any thoughts, recommendations, suggestions, hints, tips, or even criticisms of what I'm doing in the game, then please do make a note of it in the comments box below. It'd be awesome to hear from you. And, of course, if you've not already subscribed to the channel, you can do that now. And that way you'll know when I upload another one of these or any of my other Let's Play series. But from me, Ajax Post, here in Sim Bristol Airport. Until the next time, bye-bye for now.